Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Do you really know what's inside your cooler? Well, years ago when things were simpler, you had just a very basic cooler, which was basically a slug of copper. Uh, this one is surrounded by aluminum and you have a little fan on top. And this came with a lot of Intel systems and it was plenty uh, adequate for moving enough air across a CPU that was not very high uh, of a clock speed and it certainly wasn't overclocked. But again, it's just a slug of copper with some aluminum. The heat's transferred from your CPU to the copper, from the copper to the aluminum fins where the air would go across the fins and take the heat away. And this is another very simple cooler from the days of cooling early AMD chips. But again, it is just a very big slug of copper with some copper fins and the fan there would blow air across the copper fins and it ultimately pulled the heat out of your system. Then we got a little more sophisticated. This is off an old dual CPU Dell workstation from several years ago and we got uh, into heat pipes. And you might think that these are solid tubes of copper. Well, they're actually not and I'll show you that here in just a moment. So we went from coolers like this all the way up to this monster from Noctua. This thing here is an absolute beast, but it also has heat pipes. And they are not solid. They are indeed hollow. Same thing with this G100M from Cooler Master. Now it doesn't have heat pipes per se, but it has one giant heat pipe in the center. So while you have a slug of copper here on the bottom, it does have uh, sort of one giant heat pipe in the middle. Then we gradually moved to liquid cooling. That's right. Our systems got so big and so powerful that we had to have a pump and a radiator with fans and we had to have a liquid in here, which is usually uh, water and a glycol mixture. It looks a lot like antifreeze in your car. So these systems, while uh, as cool as they are, they introduced another factor in there, which was you could have pump failure, in which case you could have some problems. Uh, an air cooler, at least you still have this giant heat sink that can help pull heat away, even if you have fan issues. So looking up close at this old Dell cooler, I cut away the corner there so you can see what's going on inside the, the heat pipe there. A lot of people think these heat pipes are actually solid copper, and they're not. They're actually hollow tubes, as you can see. And inside the tubes are these little tiny particles of copper that are lining the inside of the tube and they center them in there. And Centering is a process where you sort of melt them, not to the melting point where they're liquid, but they all stick together and they form a very porous surface. So you could take a few drops of water and put it on there and it would actually wick in there or soak in like a sponge. And the purpose of that starts down here at the bottom. So this is the surface that would be touching the top of your CPU. The heat would be transferred from your CPU to that plate and down here to these heat pipes. Of course you can see the heat pipes travel up through the fin stack. The water that's in there is actually a very small amount. There's not enough in there to pour out at all. It's just a few drops, uh, a very small amount in there. And these pipes, uh, they put them under a vacuum and then they pinch the end shut here and then they solder it. So there's actually a little bit of a vacuum inside these pipes. And water, of course, the boiling point, uh, is lowered when you lower the pressure. So down here, the base, the hot heat pipe transfers the heat to the liquid water. The liquid water then, through a phase change, flashes into a gas. That gas now has the heat, the heat that it took to change it from a liquid to a gas, and it goes from an area that's hot to an area that's cooler up the fin stack where it condenses as the heat is removed through these fins, through the air traveling over the fins. Liquid condenses up here in the heat pipe. It soaks into this porous surface here that you see inside where it slowly travels down the heat pipe. The liquid part travels down the heat pipe back to the bottom where the whole process starts over. It picks up the heat again, changes from a liquid to a gas, and then moves right back up the inside of the heat pipe where it condenses, changes to a liquid, gets soaked into the uh, inside lining, and goes back down. So this cycle just goes on and on back and forth. 
that's really how it all works. So no matter how big and bad your air cooler is, inside these fat heat pipes is a little bit of water. Now you know. This is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.